90, a little ditty from 1986 called Aliens. This Mother's Day classic is all about <laughs> Ellen Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver. Get away from her. And uh, space marines visiting a colony of cocooned victims, all carrying aliens that bleed acid. Mostly. Mostly. Uh, while on this special trip, Ripley meets and saves a little girl named Newt. Before their mission is game over, Newt introduces Ripley to a terrifying doll head that she carries with her as a support animal. And the doll's name is Casey, and I want that doll head. <laughs> That's so creepy. I knew you'd love this one. Yeah. Right In this movie, Newt represents hope. And when Ripley finds her, she's got this little underground cavern uh, where there's like a picture of her family and some other toys and stuff. But the one toy she carries with her is a terrifying head of a doll. So would you hold this doll and walk around? or I would probably do like a Flavor Flav gold chain and put the baby, oh, the doll cool. head, like right on the end of yeah. it. Welcome to Buzz in the Tower, a podcast dedicated to the movies of the 1980s. Prepare to be stuffed in our DeLorean and taken on a trip through the best decade of film ever. Hey, Mo, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. So if you love Caddyshack, The Goonies, Aliens, Weird Science, Spies Like Us, The Great Outdoors, Empire Strikes Back, The Great Muppet Caper, Pretty in Pink, Predator, Rocky IV, Roadhouse, Say Anything, Real Genius, Short Circuit, Some Kind of Wonderful, Beverly Hills Cop, Akira, Tango and Cash, The Breakfast Club, and They Live, just to name a few, then sit back, relax, and get ready to be entertained. Because we came here to chew bubblegum and podcast about 80s movies, and we're all out of bubblegum. If you haven't already, subscribe to Buzz in the Tower on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast platform is. And while you're there, leave a review and a five-star rating. It's a moral imperative! You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, and all social media platforms by searching the tag at Buzz in the Tower. That's B-U-Z-Z-N, The Tower. Also, check out our website, buzzinthetower.com, and grab some officially licensed gear. It's so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking some up. Now, if you want to get nuts, let's get nuts. Head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzinthetower. With memberships as low as $3 a month, you can have access to tons of extra content, and a portion of all proceeds go directly to Save Ferris. Dark O'Shane, darling, Dark O'Shane. Buzz in the Towers brought to you by Sonic Loans. You can find them at sonicloans.com. Max, the only way that I could afford half of the things I want to put in my museum is if I have the absolute best mortgage. And where do we go for the best mortgages, Max? Sonic Loans. You got it. Charlie and his team are going to make sure that you get a low percent. And you know what comes with a low percent? More money in your pocket. And if you have more money in your pocket, and you know you can buy with more money, Max? The Gajanti Dagger. <laughs> I want the knife. The rate. The PMI. Sonic Loans wants to put cash in your pocket so you can spend it on whatever kind of weird things you're into, right? And for us, that's building a museum with artifacts from 80s movies. So reach out to Charlie and his team today. Tell them that Buzz in the Tower sent you and get ready to actually love the mortgage experience and not hate it like all those other suckers out there not going to Sonic Loans. NMLS number 1955855. Not available in all states. Not a commitment to lend. Additional requirements apply. Visit sonicloans.com or call 313-488-4888 for more information. Buzz in the Tower is also brought to you by Bolton Legal Group. You can find them at boltonlegalgroup.com for a free consultation. Call 248-595-0001. Max, someone comes up to you on the street and says, hey, I'm uh, willing to send you the Jade Buddha pendant from Rambo 2. Ooh, I'm getting in that van. You're getting, on you're getting in that van, and then you're yeah. going to buy it, and then you're going to bring it to me, and it's going to be an actual Reese's Pieces chocolate pendant that you got ripped off on. Who are you going to ask to file that lawsuit? Bolton Legal Group. Bolton Legal Group. Ian and his team are going to go after whatever you need them to go after to make sure you don't get ripped off. Bird law, criminal law, social law. <laughs> Ian and his team are going to protect you. They're going to take care of you. And bird law. Don't forget about bird law. I may have mentioned that. Reach out to Ian today. Tell him that Buzz in the Tower sent you. Get the right attorney in your corner so that you're not left with a chocolate-covered peanut butter jade Buddha from Rambo 2. Although now that I say that, that Sounds does good. sound delicious. Yeah. <laughs> 
Today's episode, the 80s Collector Part 6 Action Edition. It's been a while since we unlocked our airport hangar of 80s movie memorabilia. Our collection has everything from the saxophone from The Lost Boys to the glaive from Krull. But today, we are focused exclusively on 80s action movie keepsakes. So form a single line, have your tickets ready, and get ready to walk through the hallways of the Buzz in the Tower Smithsonian Museum. I'm Mo Shapiro, and joining me as always, the Benicio Del Toro to my Ben Stiller, Max Sanders. And with that, let's start collecting. What's What reference are you making? Benicio was the collector in the Marvel films. Oh, yeah. And Ben Stiller, Night in the Museum. So you got a museum and a collector, I thought it fit. Okay, I get it. It's just 80s-wise, I was trying to pick up. Were they in any 80s movies? Wasn't Benicio really young? And Oh, he's a James Bond uh, Yeah, he was the James Bond henchman. In the Timothy Dalton one. You got it. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, License to Kill. Yeah. and uh, Living ben, Daylights? Yeah, and ben, yeah. ben Stiller, what? Next of Kin? Next of Kin. Look at you! Yeah. You just made a next of Kin pull like that! Woo! That is exciting. Yeah. That's growth. Yeah. That's how I know you and I can <laughs> remain friends forever. By the way, I did not even look into next of Kin for this episode. Shame on me. I know, what the hell? It's largely ignored. Yeah. Max, we've been uh, going through quite a rip of just talking about movies as a whole. So today we're throwing it back old school and doing a collector's episode. But before we talk collection, let's talk fandom. If you like the show, or if this is your first time listening and you just want to trust us, you're going to like it. Welcome. Also, follow, subscribe, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcast player you are using. Yeah, we got a bad review the other day. I want to talk about that. (laughs) Why'd you bring it up? Sorry. I, I hadn't brought it up in at least four days. I thought you would never bring it up again. Okay. I shouldn't have done that. Well, we have to hurry up because the person thinks that we spend too much time at the beginning <laughs> having banter and not enough time. Jumping right into it. I'll mur- If I find that person, I'll murder them. Trans Addict 11? Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so, addicted to trance. He's got issues, all right? I know. Trance. What does trance even mean? It's a dance music. By the way, just so everybody's hearing us, trance, T-R-A-N-C-E, not to be <laughs> mistaken with something else. Yeah. Anyways, Max, uh, if you want more content because you like us and you're not a pig who leaves us a terrible review, <laughs> pig, head on over to at Buzz in the Tower on any social media profile and you'll find us. We've got a TikTok. We've got a Facebook. We've got a Twitter. We've, we've got, got a Hulk. We've got a Bumble. We've yeah. got a, a, what is it called? Farmers Only. Yeah, we, everything. We're on it all. <laughs> so, that's really good. Then we should make a dating site called Farmers Ted Only. Oh, that'd be good. And it's it's old, all eighties. All eighties dating. It's an eighties dating app. It's, wow, this is actually a great that's idea. It's not bad. It's not bad. Dear God. <laughs> oh my God. By the way, if you want some eighties uh, memorabilia and like nostalgia stuff, not memorabilia, nostalgia. Whatever. Watch watch the new movie Air. It takes place in nineteen eighty four. Oh. You know the Michael Jordan shoe. I ben do. Affleck I and, do. Uh, it's, a, it's really fun, and it's very 80s. Do you know what other movie is uh, Wetting My Whistle? There's a Tetris movie coming out. It's already out, yeah. It's already out? Yeah. I, I got to watch that. That looks very good. It looks cool. I'm a huge Tetris guy. Really? Do, 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 I'd always get frustrated do, do, and throw the of Game course. Boy. That's, yeah. yeah, I can't imagine you having the patience for a game like nope. that. Max Sanders. The oh, other thing. one last thing. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead. Sorry, I went to a show in Detroit the other day, mm-hmm. and we went to a bar arcade, uh-huh. Barcade. They had games. They had a Die Hard video game, and they had a RoboCop video game that I got to play. Dead or Alive. Yeah. Give me your quarter. And a Michael Jackson thriller game. Which, <laughs> yeah. Turns into a robot. And That's kills, ignorant. And dance, can dance and kills people. <laughs> That's ignorant, man. You're being ignorant. No, You're being stop ignorant. It. No, stop. Uh, <laughs> God got bl- your God, nose. God bless South Park, Got man. your nose. God bless South Park. <laughs> Uh, I hope they put that in the time capsule for future uh, generations a thousand years down the road to find. It would be a good, like, cultural. It would They're be the best. Like the They're the best. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care what anyone says. They're the best. There's nobody better than Around? Them. And nothing's ever going to take them down. The last and final note that I'll make, well, I guess I got two. One is buzzinthetower.com, B-U-Z-Z-N, thetower.com. Go buy some sweatshirts and shirts for your friends and family. Uh, all the proceeds go to the Save Max Foundation. Yeah, and it's he's, nice and comfy. He's very sickly. His eyes are sunken in. He's got uh, Pete, oh. da- Pete Davidson eyes. I'm healthier than you are. Well, on the outside, no. On the inside, probably. Yeah. Yes. But you look terrible. Actually, you look really well rested today. It's very abnormal. You look. You well, look you gave me more today. time. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you had to heal yeah. the healing process. And last and not least, our Patreon. If you want to support the show, the best way possible is to join our Patreon. You can join for as little as $3 a month, as much as $10 a month, from our Goose to our Iceman to our Maverick. And Max, guess what I want to tell you right now? What? We've got a new patron, uh, a new Maverick, waiting for permission to buzz the tower. Should we bring him in? Bring him in. Sounds like a plan. Sorry, Goose, but it's time to buzz the tower. God 
Max, thank I'll, you. <laughs> so, that's every time you get me. <laughs> oh, I don't even have a quote. I don't even have a quote. I, I totally screwed up. Did I say we do from Hot Shots? Yeah. Uh, look, you, Wendy, I can fly <laughs> right into your Patreon. How about you lick hot sauce off my toesies? There we go. Oh, Max. <laughs> That's a good way to der- derail old Mo. Cook some eggs there on my yeah, bare bacon. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Breakfast foreplay. I brought back your chafing dish. <laughs> Choose the gummy bears. Oh, <laughs> man. What are we talking about? Patreon.com. <laughs> Jeff Sheehan has joined us as a maverick. Jeff is someone who I know. Remember my 40th birthday? My 40th birthday. Remember I went to the Green Bay game? Yeah. He was there. Oh, that's cool. He's a buddy of Brian's and by proxy, a friend of mine. Out of nowhere, he joined. I love it. I like it. Let's get him some pins. Jeff, message us your address so Max can send you a pin now that you are officially a co-pilot. Anything else to add, Max? I thought you were done. I might be. Was he, was he the guy with the like really tight looking handsome face? No. Oh. But that doesn't mean <laughs> he's not handsome. So really nice layup, I guess. With all that being said, to Jeff and all of our patrons, I want to remind you that you are the light in our eye, the tickle in our laugh, the fart in our butt. So thank you very much. <laughs> nope. So with that, I give you, I Max, I screwed the whole thing up. We'll keep this all in. And butt. I just want to say from Max and I in our deepest, loftiest, most heartfelt Max, I'm, I'm blowing this left and right. What do we want to say? You're welcome. And a one, and a two, and a three. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Tony. Thanks. A Saunders. Thanks. Good morning. What? Thanks. Todd. Thanks. Ren. Thank you for, uh, well, thank you. Well, that went really terrible. <laughs> yeah, what's with you today? Well, if you would get more people to sign up for the Patreon, then I would, uh, you know. Last week we had one. We did? Yeah. And this week we had one, too. I know. <sighs> one a week. Rolling in the dough. <laughs> <laughs> and we only had six people cancel last week, so we're really <laughs> looking great. No, oh, we didn't. I, we didn't. It's my yeah. fault. I have not been uh, tending to it as well as I should, but I did on this episode, so we got a bunch of people with feedback. Summer, we're going to have more time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's always summer. I am. Summer days. All right, Max. Today's episode is our collector episode for a brief history of what a collector episode is. One time many years ago, and I can say that now because we've been on for almost three years. You had the idea of what would you put in your man cave and the man cave turned into a house and the house turned into an airport hangar because we wanted to put some of our favorite memorabilia from 80s movies into like a museum. Now to clarify, we don't retain and keep the mystic or magical powers of these items unfortunately max fought hard on that he's like well i, I would like you know the, the time the machine genie, genie's lamp <laughs> yeah. yeah i know i'd like the delorean but the flux capacitor has to actually work that's <laughs> not how this works mm. this is purely for collection purposes does the glaive work can you like kill people i with hope it? so that'd be great yeah. according to south park yes <laughs> one of the ones like i always remember that you picked was bender's glove from breakfast club yeah gloves that's a great one yeah i like they're, they're, so like those are some examples the i mentioned the gajanti dagger at the beginning from uh, the golden child uh what are some other ones we talked about uh, the flamethrower from Action Jackson. Yep. The uh, arcade game from the last Star. Oh, that's a really good. Which one. that was one of my favorite ones that um, I put in there. Prince's bike from Purple Rain. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so today's episode is another collector's episode, but we have stuck strictly to action films, right, Max? Yeah. Okay, because you have a tendency to drift. I'm just you don't you, you Tokyo drift on me sometimes. No action. I. I, it's when it comes family. to rules, I'm pretty good. Right, Although cool. I have one kind of ah, there's always caveat one. in this always one. Always a yeah. caveat. Yeah. What do you got? No, no. Oh, you wait. You'll, you'll see. Max, I am no longer contractually obligated to allow you to go first or second or make that decision. Oh, yeah. So I will go back to being in charge and tell you that you're going to go first. Okay. And I will go second. We each have six. Let's dance. So one thing about a... <laughs> it's been a while. It's yeah. been a while. <laughs> one Kick thing- the dust <laughs> off. It's all right. We're going to be okay. That's talking. Oh. Uh, <laughs> One of the best things about 80s action movies is the unintentional comedy. I think that gets overlooked, that you have to laugh. Do you think it's unintentional? I think they're not, when they're not aware of it, it's like... Give me an example. Uh, like the way Steven Seagal runs. Okay. He doesn't know that yes. that's hilarious. Yes, the Peg Bundy run. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, or like romantic involvement in action movies can be really funny sometimes. Because it's always awkward because the best action heroes typically have no chemistry with leading leads. Exactly. I'm with you. Yeah. So I think we get... Under we don't use that enough as like something that we really enjoy in our action movies. That's okay. like part of it. So I went in that vein. In that vein. Yeah. 
Romance. Uh, I went Frank Dux's blood red boxer briefs from Bloodsport. So me, oh, and when he had his let me, uh, the let romance. Me, let me okay, set sorry, the scene yeah, for you. It took me a minute. I'm like blood red because the blood threw me off. So I'm thinking, when did he wear? Uh, I got so you. they're deep red. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. first of all, 1988 Bloodsport. Deep, blood deep red. <laughs> Frank Dux, who's played Dukes. It's Dukes. Yes, I know. You I better, Jesus yeah. Christ! If you don't Daffy Duck this one, we'll both be shot. Played by John Claude Van Damme, is an American martial artist the serving in the military from Brussels, and decides to leave the army to compete in a martial arts tournament where you can die. Great, great premise for a accurate, movie. Very accurate. So Frank has just evaded the cops in what we see is like a Mentos commercial, basically. Do, 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 <laughs> do, ah. Uh. And he had a magical evening with the charming Janice. Very magical. Yeah, she's lying in bed. Sun's pouring in over the water view of her hotel. She's looking over, smiling. And you're wondering, like, oh, what's John Cloud doing over there? He's butt naked. And from the back, he's pulling up these red tidy whities and there's just something hilarious about how confident he is. And he be- I bet he thought, like, yes, this is me being sensual. And it's like, it's so ridiculous. Is it it's, weird? I, no, it's not. I mean, I think it's, it's funny. Not, you know, it's it's niche. Yeah. Niche, yeah. if you will. Um, I've, I've heard you do weirder ones on this. Okay. I guess uh, when people are thinking action films, they're not thinking Jean-Claude Van Damme's silky dark. What did you call it? Not, Blood red. Blo- no, but then you change it. Tidy whities. No. Boxer briefs. Deep, deep red. Did you call it deep red? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. They are, they are deep They're red. They're ma- mahogany red. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. I got nothing really to comment on that. I mean, I, I guess the only thing I would pose is there is there anything else from Bloodsport that would be cooler to have? Uh, the coin that he does the uh, with the uh, Arabian fighter. Oh, or, yeah, or the over, trick. Yeah. Like that, that actual coin would be kind of cool. The exploding brick, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the exploding brick. Uh, the sword that he yeah. tried to steal when he looked like Screech. From uh, oh, Saved yeah. by the Bell. Donald Gibbs' uh, headband, the Harley Davidson yeah, one. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one. Yeah. That's a good one. The Chung, the Chung Lee throws on his uh, leg. That's yeah. a good one. I like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know what? The tooth that the guy, the, the gold oh, crown yeah, that the guy picks out. up, yeah. that actually would have been a really that good is cool one. Too. But I'm going to give you the gold. Or the gold. I'm going to give you the red box. This one felt like me. Uh, you gave and a good. You, I wore tidy whites as a kid, so uh, this is no much. God. For you that. gave a good lead into it. Yeah. I understand your point about like the chemistry or lack thereof between the two of them is terrible. Yeah, very. He's got very more bad. Chem- chemistry with Jackson. Yeah, he does. That's the best. Anytime, ever. my brother. Anytime, <laughs> anytime, any place, anywhere, except on Moe's podcast because I don't do podcasts. I'm Donald Gibb. But he did. I know someone else is. Sorry, don't, brother. Don't talk about it. Jesus Christ, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I'm going from my weakest to my strongest as, okay. as usual. I'll kick things off with a lovely movie <laughs> from Diddy. 90, yeah, Little Diddy from 1986 called Aliens. This Mother's Day classic is all about <laughs> Ellen Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver. Get away from her. And uh, space marines visiting a colony of cocooned victims, all carrying aliens that bleed acid. Mostly. Mostly. Uh, while on this special trip, Ripley meets and saves a little girl named Newt. Before their mission is game over, Newt introduces Ripley to a terrifying doll head that she carries with her as a support animal, and the doll's name is Casey, and I want that doll head. <laughs> That's so creepy. I knew you'd love this one. So, yeah. so Newt is hope, yeah. right? In this movie, Newt represents hope. This little child has survived in what otherwise is just a Nightmare on Elm Street scenario, and when Ripley finds her, she's got this little underground cavern Uh, where there's like a picture of her family and some other toys and stuff. But the one toy she carries with her is a terrifying head of a doll and uh, introduces that doll to Ripley when Ripley's cleaning off her face and says, uh, this is Casey. So would you like hold this doll and walk around or? Oh yeah, I would, I would probably do like a flavor flave gold chain and put the baby, the doll head like right on the end of it. But I, it's just very, uh, just unique, weird, terrifying, but I just, I love it. I, I, I think this is one of those things like I love that movie and I just, the, the nuance of Newt. Yeah. Mostly. 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 So where she never acted again. Yeah. Well, would you? It's a terrifying experience. Yeah, it's true. Anything you think is cooler in this movie? Well, no, if there's anything I thought that was cooler, I would take it. Oh, well, you are you to trying try to ask me the question I ask you? Yeah. Like, is there anything that could compete with it? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to just write your questions for you and put them on a piece of paper? Maybe. Hey, Mo, similarly to how you asked me for my movie. Yes. There's other stuff in this movie that's fantastic. Face hugger. So I actually think the coolest thing would be, I don't know what the name of it is. The but egg? Not the egg. I know the name of an egg. That is, that's a real simple thing to identify. It's an egg. <laughs> <laughs> do you, when we talk, do you listen to what I say or do you just have egg in your head and you're like, I'm going to say egg? egg. <laughs> Moron. Mother alien? Mother alien? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Um, the tool they use that has the screen that identifies the volume of aliens that are in the ceiling. So it's kind of like a motion detector, but it's a portable motion detector. I think that'd be kind of cool to have one of those, especially with like all my kids. I could like beep, 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 beep. 
beep, 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 and see what, where they're What about the mouse. guns, the military guns? That'd be cool. I'm not a big military gun guy. Really? That, that, doesn't, that doesn't excite me. You own a gun. I own a gun, but I own a couple guns, but it doesn't excite me. Okay. Flamethrower. You could have got me on the flamethrower. Okay, that's fine. I do enjoy good flamethrowers. Never never turned down one of those. Ooh, Bishop's Knife. Bishop's Knife would have been cool. It says the thing, too, is like I like little like understated, you know, weird th- like doll's heads, I guess. It makes me a psycho. All right, Max, me done being a psycho. Moving on to you. What is your next item from Action Films for our Collector's Museum? All right, this one is my controversial pick. Oh, Jesus. So, I forgot how you do this every episode that yeah. we do like this. It's been a while. How many episodes has it been since we've done one like this? Ten? Yeah, at least. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So Is this where you go off the rails and give me an answer that makes no sense? No, it... You'll be confused and you, you'll get it. Great. So what I want is I want the bow and arrow and hat from Truman in Next of Kin. Okay. So, but when but. we when we put it into our airplane hangar, I want to burn it. Ah. So know. that every time you look. That's a terrible thing to Next say. Next of Kin. I know. Yeah, no, that's not okay. A movie you like. Because I'm allowed a, to do what I want with it, I know, right? It's super weird. It's weird. But would you think that would really hurt me, though? Yeah. That wouldn't. It Your answer hurts me more than you burning the artifact. Well, good. Good. Well, you win. <laughs> <laughs> You, I, 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 you, I, I, is, the, is the point you're trying to make that you don't like next of kin well i wanted to upset you that won't upset me no. because there's enough strong-willed smart people out there that will respond to your statement with a resounding it's an awesome movie hmm. i don't know there's a lot of people that think uh, roadhouse stinks too you no wanna, they you don't join that if you don't like next of kin you can't like roadhouse that's that's, not, that's that's the law that's that's the law no it's not sure is I, anything else from next again no. you would pick? This was a you totally mailed in this answer. Great work. Are well, we no, ready to I, go back to mine? Oh, I, you got more? I, I can't wait. Turn it around. Should I switch it? Yes. This is okay. a terrible You don't okay. even want that. Yeah, I didn't. This is supposed to be six things you want. Yeah. Okay. I want Dylan's <laughs> se- severed arm from Predator. Now that's a great one. Yeah. So how many <laughs> <things? laughs> yeah. Is it the goriest scene in the movie? Right. So so it's funny because this is That was I'm, really good inter- that was a good uh, yell, by you the like way. That? Yeah. I'm now slowly remembering. Why we moved away from these kind of episodes because of your rampant inconsistency. So we start off both by talking a little bit about the movie, doing a lead in. Now it's like, <laughs> here's my curveball. I don't even want this. <laughs> Cut to Arm from Predator, which we assume everybody knows what we're talking about. And you've skipped already to the parts. So that's fine. Yes, I think it's a great idea. Additionally, I also think that the fact that Chubbs is missing his hand yeah. as a nod to Predator. From uh, Billy Matt, Happy Gilmore is the greatest thing in the world. Oh, and also it's really cool that you have Carl Weathers' like replica arm. So like you have Apollo Creed's arm in your collection. Well, more importantly, Action Jackson's arm. Uh, not more importantly oh, than Apollo so. Creed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know, man. I'm kidding. Obviously, yeah. like Apollo Creed. Jesus. And, uh, okay. <laughs> in the movie Predator, yeah. which Max didn't mention, Carl Weathers plays Dylan. 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 And uh, he is the bro friend Brofriend, that's a word. Yeah. Of Dutch, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I call them more professional friends at frenemies. This point. Yeah, frenemies, if you will. So towards the end of the movie, when they all become galvanized by the monster that's hunting them, Dylan takes his gun, slings it, turns around, and has his arm blown off at the shoulder. It's the most violent part of the movie. And his arm remains on the ground shooting, shooting the gun yeah. because of the muscles pulling the trigger. That's when you're like, this movie could end really terribly. Yeah. Like, finally. Like, yeah. you, you think at that point, maybe they'll get out or maybe, like, Dylan will, like, get the away. The death of Dylan, it, you know. It's, it's the point. I, I, yeah. I think it's very much Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. Like, when you whack every major character in a movie yeah. except one, it's a cocky move. I it's like really it. cool. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, good answer, man. Max, thank uh, you. Not your first one sucked, but the second one was good. Um, let's see, which one do I want to give you right now? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stick with the theme. Uh, I'm gonna stick what's with. Your, I'm, gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with Predator. Okay. Uh, Predator, the single best action film ever made. Yep. Dutch and his crew cooked up a story, meat grinder, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a handshake heard around the world. You know what that is, correct? The slap. You son of a bitch. Crisp. You like the so little, little beep I put in there? How many beep. times? How many times do you think they did it? You think oh, it was a one I, take? One take. Yeah. One take. Because every time they did it, the whole set shook. <laughs> so they can only do it a couple times. Max, uh, I want Dylan's tie. What's with this tie? <laughs> I want his tie. Okay. I want his tie. It's it's like too small for him, right? Yeah, it? yeah. It's 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 some weird, like, I don't even know, paisley color. Yeah, it is. It. Yeah, and it's it's too and short for him. And he has a short sleeve shirt, which looks kind of weird. Is too. it a short sleeve shirt or a rolled? I thought it was a rolled long sleeve. It might sleeve. be either way. Rolled. His arms are showing yeah, up. Arms yeah. are so, I mean, he could be he could be probably wearing an adult large and it would look like a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, it's true. The significance of the tie and the reason I want it is because 
Dylan's character is this delicate balance of pushing too many pencils and holding on to what you really are, which is a killer. And that was the great part about this whole film. He's like by the book, you know, CD CIA guy. But at the end, when everybody's getting murdered, he slips back into the woods. Give up my position again. I'll get you. I'll get you. I, I, I think a long time ago, wasn't uh, one of the big razors that Mac had yeah, was Bill on our Dukes. list? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I want the tie. One. Yeah. I want the tie. Because the tie, outside of putting it in the actual museum, I you, feel like it's something I could wear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have a big board meeting, you're ready oh, to go. Oh, my God. Yeah. Forget the red power tie. I yeah. want the Dylan Predator tie. That means I'm ready to do business and negotiate. I feel like uh, Dutch's red polo might be more intense and like more kind of like Tiger Woods on a Sunday. Yeah, but you know I, I mean? can't fill that polo. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I can fill the tie. <laughs> my neck can hold the tie. Yeah. My, my arms can't hold the polo. Well played. Well played. So there you go. Thank I like you, thank it. You. That's good. Max, kicking it back to you. Okay, let's see. You haven't seen some of these movies that I've done. Well, so. that's good. Actually, no. I'm going to go with an underrated classic. I'm going with Dolph Lundgren's Leather Ensemble from The Punisher. The entire ensemble. Yeah. So he, even the buttless cheeks, uh, pants, the leather pants. He doesn't have buttless ones. Yeah, he does. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would have known. Yeah, I know you would have known. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, this is one of the first Marvel movies, and it's awesome. I mean, I saw it for the first time four or five months ago. He's playing Frank Castle, whose family's murdered by criminals, and he wages war on crime as a vigilante assassin known only as the Punisher. And then there's this whole like Japanese Yakuza kind of vibe to it. And it's really dark and really well filmed. You, when I told you I liked this movie, you got psyched. I was surprised. It doesn't fit your mo for the type of movie. That you it's like. John Wicky kind of a little bit, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like going through these phases of like killing people and like these underground coded things. And Dolph is six five. I'm six five, so I feel like I, I mean, yeah, it would look like I'm wearing my dad's clothes a little bit, but I could actually put this on and pretend I'm tough. All right, yeah, and it's just I don't know. Dolph Lundgren's such a '80s part for me, and like, there's nothing. Uh, maybe I mean Drago's shorts, but I can't wear Drago shorts. I'm not. I don't have that body. You know, you forgot, uh, as did I. So shame on both of us to ask the question. And the only reason I'm thinking of it right now is because of the movie The Punisher. But we both forgot to ask the question: Is there is there anything else from Predator that would have been better than the arm, or better than the polo and the tie? And it makes me think of The Punisher. Is there anything else in The Punisher outside of his outfit? Any of the weapons? I mean, he's got a really cool knife with the uh, skull on the it. The knife is what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty cool. His bike is awesome. His bike. But then going back to Predator, yeah. uh, I think Old Painless we've already done a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but the only other thing I was thinking of is his hat. I think Dutch's hat when he first gets off the chopper is kind of cool. Ooh, and, I mean, I would go Billy's hat. Yeah. Billy has the side hat. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Billy's knife. Billy's knife. Oh, man. Yeah. I would cut some steaks with that. Or your own chest. Whatever yeah. comes first. Uh, all right. I like it. Punisher, I'm with you. I'm yeah. There. It's a fun movie. That was your third? Yeah. Luke right. Gossett Jr. Uh, yeah. I, I got one more and then we'll take a commercial break. How's that Sounds sound? good. All right, Max. How about a little movie called Action Jackson? Ooh. Weathers again. What happens when you take Dylan from Predator, make him a cop, and have him report to Mac, also from Predator? You get <laughs> Action Jackson, Max. <laughs> Sergeant Jericho Action Jackson, played by It's All in the Hips Carl Weathers, which we just talked about, All is a crime-stopping man amongst boys. Before he is able to track down and kill Peter Delaplane. Played by Craig T. Nelson. A.K.A. our favorite football coach. Yeah. Uh, both in All the Right Moves and in Coach. coach. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, he takes us on an exciting ride of one-liners, fights, and castration. <laughs> But That's true. Oh, Papa Doc? Is that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I always wondered the Eminem 8 Mile villain. Is the same? Yeah. I have no idea. I think it's from that. It could, that'd be great if it was. Action He's a take... Detroit cop. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, that'd be so great. Yeah. Um, but to kick off this movie, there's a local vagrant who gets picked up by Biff Tannen and brought into the police station. Do you remember that? Yeah, the scared little guy, right? Yep. So they spend the entire time in the car telling him about Action Jackson, getting him like really terrified of the rumor of this monster that's going to like murder him as a cop. He tries to escape, so he's running around, dodging throughout the police station. He smashes into a cop who's holding a pot of coffee. The pot of coffee smashes and spills on Action's desk. So there's coffee everywhere, and as this kid gets up off the ground and sees that the desk is destroyed he looks at a nameplate and the nameplate says sergeant jackson he then looks up to see the towering masculine muscle oh he looks two feet tall action yeah. jackson yeah. and he passes out yep i want the desk plate oh that's cool i want the name desk plate i want to put that on my desk that's really good Just sergeant jackson yeah i thought that was kind of fun so you're like in the whole carl weathers work ensemble i'm a little bit oh yeah i didn't even think about that at the yeah. time yeah great call i did not even put that how funny is that i didn't put that together that's sweet now, you're going to ask me, as I have instructed you, if there's anything else from that movie I would like. The jar with the testicles would be funny. Um, I'm trying to think of what else from... Is there a cool car? No. Nah. 
Vanity? I don't, the I don't car. Know. The yeah. car is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the little pouch with the heroin needle. <laughs> if you're diabetic, you could put your uh, <laughs> nope. insulin in there. <laughs> Craig T. Nelson's like workout room. Yeah. That was fun. That was really cool. Yeah. It's the worst stunt double work in history. Isn't uh who is the guy who he fights? Is it the guy It's the guy who eats the chocolate bar right. in uh Die Hard. Right. He's yeah. in everything. He's yeah, he's in Big Trouble, Big Trouble in China, China yeah. Lethal Weapon. Yeah. He's the, the electrocution guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh that's my third pick, Max. Any other questions for me on Action Jackson and my third pick? No, we've Carl <laughs> Weathers. Yeah. We, we Carl weathered the hell out of this yeah, episode. There, there you go. I got you, baby. I got you. And on that note and stutter, I'm going to slip us on over to a commercial break. I'm having a hard time. You're big hard time. Yeah. Buzz in the Tower is also brought to you by Dolby Real Estate. You can find them at weardolby.com. What house from an action film would you want? Because I'm going, in my mind, right to Lethal Weapon 2, the house on stilts. Uh, Cobra. I want Marion Cabretti's apartment. In either situation, there's only one group out there that can make sure you're not getting ripped off buying a house that either has stability issues or a blender that makes pizza shakes in the morning. Mm. Am I Mason? No, he, he, cuts, he, it he cuts it Yeah, he cuts it with the <laughs> scissors, which is super weird. But there's like a, a Latin gang outside his house. I don't know. I'm a pizza. <laughs> Dolby Real Estate is the premier real estate agency in the world. They're going to make sure that if you buy a house, that you're getting the right price. If you sell a house, that you are ripping off whoever you're selling it to. They are the right group to go to. Tell Simon and his team when you call that you were sent by Buzz in the Tower. They'll take care of you. They'll make sure you get into the right home. $400 million in sales in 2021. 1,000 homes sold. Reach out today. Tell them we sent you. All right. We're back. We He's are black. Back. I'm mad. Coffee. No, it's black coffee. Okay, saw, oh, okay, by the way. Okay, 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 okay. I, I saw Lethal okay. Weapon 3 for the okay. first time ever. You've never seen it? I know. It's really good. It is. Renee Russo is fantastic. She's really good. Yeah, yeah. Really weird bad guy, though. It's yeah. like kind of a corrupt cop who, like, kind of looks like who doesn't mind killing a cops. softball dad. And it's kind of sad that the young rookie cop gets Yeah, killed. with the cop killer bullets. Yeah, cops you. Catch, cops you? Cops you off guard. Catches you off guard. Yeah. Max, we have three left. Billy the Kid. Yeah, there you go. We have three left each yep. to cover. I don't, I don't think you've seen two of the movies. Uh, I've got I've a, I'm not, I, don't, I don't even take you into consideration anymore when I do these episodes. I just have three bangers that you're going to love. Well, All no, three of them n- you're going to love. It makes me nervous when I do this because I have to explain the movie and I'm not good at that. No. What are you good at? Uh, chiming in, making you laugh. Yeah, you do make me laugh. Yeah, that's hold, all it hold is. Hold my hand, Max. Yeah. Hmm. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> 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 so, you're a big James Bond guy, but I think for some reason you've missed this one. Uh, uh, is it from uh, 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 What to Kill? Uh, uh, no. What? Okay. But Never Say Never Again. Yeah, I haven't seen that one either. So, this is 1983. Yep. This is uh, Sean Connery's last one. Of course it is, darling. Yeah. It's Unbelievable. It's one of my favorite ones. So a Spectre agent has stolen two American nuclear warheads, and James Bond must find their targets before they are detonated. Mm-hmm. And also, fun fact about this movie, Steven Seagal was a stunt coordinator on this. and he Coordinator? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. He was like uh, not a he, like an assistant, and he broke Sean Connery's wrist. Yeah. Accidentally. Well, he's, he's, his hands are a lethal weapon. Yeah, and Sean Connery didn't say anything. He was just like, whatever, you're an idiot. Give me some scotch. I'll be fine. <laughs> so I want the global domination video game, which is an action-based strategical war game that Maximilian Largo, great name for a villain, Mm -hmm. owned in the movie. Okay. So the villain made it by himself, and he's just so dignified. When they're playing, they're in a mansion, and there's one objective of this movie. It's power. You're fighting for countries chosen randomly by the machines. The machine will be like, you are playing for Spain. It's going to be $9,000 I mean, $9, to play. Mm-hmm. And you kind of, there's this huge LED thing in the middle, like a screen, and you're in these two cockpits with controls on it. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> with controls on each side. It's very kind of Tron like, but in the real world. So you hit certain areas with laser beams. Like they tell you where to hit, and you start scoring points. And you have two nuclear weapons each. You can launch at each other while this is happening. But the other person has a shield that they can put up to like block the nuclear weapon. And every time the other person gets points, your pain level on your joysticks I've goes seen, up. I've seen that scene. Yeah, so I've seen that scene. It's before. really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll so admit. like the danger level keeps going up. You could possibly die. And James loses the first two battles, mm-hmm. and the final one, he's like, let's play for the whole world, 325 grand. Yeah. And he's like, let's do it. And Bond has like an 80% danger level, but he gets the villain's level way up. He wins. And finally, at the end, and also Kim Basinger is watching this whole time. All right. Yeah. And finally, when he wins, uh, when he wins the money, the the villain wants to give him the cash, and he's like, no, I just want to dance with Domino. And, <laughs> and, I've seen this yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. 
she, he goes, do you win as gracefully as you lose? He goes, I don't know. I've never lost. Ah, yeah. yes, of yeah. course, of course. It's just really cool. A lot of vagina. Yeah. Is that her name? <laughs> yeah. We, can we say that? I think so. I think that's her name. Yeah. Okay. All right. But it's just a very cool bond thing. It'd be fun to have in your house and also to see if your friends can handle pain. Yeah. My friends, uh, they can handle pain, unfortunately. I can't handle pain, but they're they're all in pain. I could pain. probably, I could maybe beat you in this game. Did you uh, plan on going 20 straight minutes about this movie? I kind of zoned out halfway through it, but it's, it was a good explanation. What where are we on? Are we on it was our... complicated. Like, I wanted you're, to show why I liked it. You did a good job. As much as I give you a hard time about explaining things, I think you really did a nice Thank job. You. So are we ready to move on? Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you like James Bond, too. I so. do. I'm going to go. You know I want you to see this you movie. Know you got me interested. I'm going to watch it. It's really fun. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I think you'll think this is my best one, but it's, I don't feel like it's my best one, but you'll think that this is my best one. Max, you ever seen a little movie called Roadhouse? Yes. A romantic comedy about a cooler who rips out people's throats uh, and does Tai Chi and uh, smaller than most people think he'd be. It's a beautiful movie. It's a great summary. Dalton, played by Patrick Swayze, along with his friend, fellow bouncer, and spirit guide, Wade Garrett, played by Sam Elliott, try to clean up a disgusting monstrosity of a bar called Scorekeepers. I'm sorry, the double deuce. <laughs> Shut up. That bar doesn't need cleaning. It does need a lot of cleaning. Yeah, maybe. After Dalton goes back and forth a few times trying to clean up the double deuce, he uh, gets into a pretty bad debate with uh, Brad Wesley's people, a debate, a friendly debate. <laughs> takes a, yeah, yeah. Take, takes a uh, point of order, I do declare. And he takes a nice knife gash to the rib cage. So that puts him in the hospital. Uh, he Kelly does, Lynch. Yeah, he does the stitch work himself. But he want, oh, no, no, correction. He doesn't do the stitch work. His shoulder one. I think I know where this is going, and so, I love it. So, <laughs> oh, my God. I knew this you were going to so love this. great. So at the hospital, he meets uh, his love interest, Doc, played by Kelly Lynch. My God. Of course, when you're a four foot eleven bouncer, it makes complete sense to travel around. He's not that short. He's kind of short. In the movie, he's supposed to be that short. Yeah. Uh, to travel with your no, own. He's not. <laughs> it makes sense when you're that small and you get beat up all the time <laughs> to travel around with your medical records. 31 broken bones, two bullet wounds, nine puncture wounds. Four stainless steel screws and nine staples that Kelly gave him, aka Doc. Uh, and that's just an estimate, of pain course. Pain don't hurt. Lucky for Dalton, pain don't hurt. Yeah. I want the medical records. It's so cool. I want the medical records. I want to see. I, if you see the quick picture of his body where it shows where all this stuff is. Yeah. I want the full medical no, records. No, because you, you're going to get an explanation of everything that happened now, to him. Too. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. From the movie Roadhouse that I would want. The boot that's got the knife in it. The spare tire that he keeps in his uh, in his car, the cup of coffee that I he drinks the car, in the morning, the, the, one, the junkie car, the junk car, yeah, yeah. it's got the lights that like have the yeah, protector the thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the technical term for that is it's clamshell. Uh, the bear, oh, the polar bear, the, yeah, the big, is it a polar bear? I think so. It might be. Yeah, it's big, really big, big, bear. big bear, big bear, big bear. So yeah, there's quite a bit. Uh, Wesley's car is nice. The chopper, uh, Kelly Lynch's sundress, um, Kelly Lynch. Can I <laughs> put that on my list? <laughs> Uh, so that is my selection. I love it. I knew you were. Very cool. That yeah. is, you know me very well. I tried to get a little yeah. creative. It's specific. It's fun. Are you sure it's not Pacific? The ocean. I said it pretty good, right? You said it right. Yeah. That's why I was proud of you. I want to remind you that I it is not good. the ocean. You done good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a, you know, Cletus, the slack jawed yokel. Yeah. Whenever my sister and I are talking about anything and someone does something that's very rednecky, I do say, her and I say the same thing to each other. Like we will literally break into this instantaneously. Some folk will never lose a toe <laughs> and then some folk will like Cletus, the Slack jawed yokel. How do people respond to that? Not well. Yeah. So my sister and I like only do it to each other. Okay. No, no. We oh. only say it to each other oh. in reference to other people. Okay, good. I don't like go up to someone and I'm like, hey, redneck. <laughs> yeah, stop that. Sorry. Not bad. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. My so disrespectful. My fiance is a redneck. Family's very redneck. <laughs> Dig yourself out of this. I dude, I love rednecks. Yeah. They're great people. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. They shoot cases of Bud Light. It's great. All right, what do you got? Oh. <laughs> You get your old politicky. Stop it, no. You'll get your old politicky with me. Okay. You realize we're an 80s-based podcast. A lot of people... <laughs> dude, dude, you and I, yeah. if you look at the movies we like, yeah. you don't get more redneck than you and I. Yeah, true. Okay. I just got done at the beginning of this episode defending Next of Kin. <laughs> I think I'm safe to say that I, I'm good with the people. Okay. All right. So... I saw this movie for the first time two weeks ago, and it blew my socks off, because I think, arguably, it's the worst movie of the 80s. Oh, wow. But I, but it's one of those movies that's so bad, like, you know, uh, that movie, The Room. Yes. That you have to laugh with it. An action film that's that bad. I'm it curious, is. I'm curious for what you got. Superman 3. Superman 3 is really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. So, which, which really sucks because Richard Pryor is fantastic. Yeah, he's really funny, but like, yeah. he's not even a villain. He kind of no. accidentally becomes computer yeah. programmer <laughs> for, he, for the main villain in uh, basketball. Do you know what he feels like? What? He feels like 
the guest on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, they had no they, idea what they, to do with him. They knew he was popular, yeah. and they tried to fit him into whatever skit they could. Yeah. yeah. So I want the synthetic kryptonite laced with tar that splits Superman in two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's all you need. So <laughs> You want it to be functional, though. You want to split yourself into two. No, I'm already there. So <laughs> Oh, that's great. But I mean, this so, is... so says your therapist, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> so this prop was made with help of mineral... Of a mineral, mineralogical yeah. specialist, Greg Botley and Lloyd, they selected a calcite mi- mineral and cast it in solid green resin and hand painted it with highlights. Ooh. So it's very cool looking. Yeah. But the things that it makes Superman do, it's kind of insane. Yeah. So like he rearranges the Leaning Tower of Pisa for no reason. He makes it straight. It's so it, yeah. this you know as you as you're talking about this, yeah. Max, I think I actually really have to agree with you. This yeah. might be the worst action film of the eighties. He blows out the Olympic flame. Yeah. Uh, he picks up a babe on the top of the Statue of Liberty and uh, by makes the way, sweet uh, love to her. Additionally ridiculous to this is that when he's back to normal and he goes back and fixes all the things yeah. that he broke. <laughs> this movie is so bad. And he spills oil in the ocean. I mean, it's really, and he's got a five o'clock shadow. Like yeah. suddenly he starts growing a beard yeah. and he battles himself in yeah. a junkyard. Oh, I remember. Yeah. So oh. it, there's just something so goofy. And also the way Richard Pryor gives him the synthetic kryptonite when he pretends he's a general yeah. in front of all those people in Iowa for no reason. Yeah. It's just, it's nonsensical. It's hilarious. And it also, it has like, like that Superman vibe, which is really cool. Yeah. It's God, you're right. This is probably the worst movie. ever. It's really bad. I know it's jaws four worse. Oh God. Cause jaws actually like wants to re- revenge his family. Right. Jaws three is pretty terrible, but I don't know. It's jaws four worse. So it's quest for peace. Worse than this. <laughs> These are all such bad yeah, movies. I know. We've, we're bad movie experts. All right, all right, yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. I'll move on. I can't yeah. even. Oh, I'm is, glad you enjoyed it. I did. That's yeah. a good pick. Thank you. Uh, I'm down to my last two. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to go to this one. I love this one, but I'm going to leave the one that, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got my order. Max, yeah, you remember a little movie, a little flick called Big Trouble in Little China? Of course. It's a fun little tryst about an honest working truck driver sucked into the underbelly of Chinatown and forced to confront magic demons and green-eyed beauties. Jack Burton. You like that? Yeah. So you know what old Jack Burton always says, played by Kurt Russell? All on the reflexes? You got it. Yeah. John Carpenter is best, Max. In act three of this Asian-inspired sci-fi film, Okay. Egg Shen, yep. Jack Burton, and some karate dudes are making their way to Lopan's fortress. You remember this? Yeah. Immediately before the battle, Egg Shen reminds everyone that it's time for their medicine. Oh, yeah. So this is a two-parter. I want two things. So first, Jack says, what exactly is this again? And Max, I want to be able to see things no one else can see and do things no one else can do. So, uh, I feel good. So, so now here's, yeah, I feel really good. I feel <laughs> invincible. Now, here's something kind of interesting. I originally just wanted the magic potion. Mm. And... In the conversation he's having with Jack Burton, and if you go on the internet, it's all over the internet, people all often refer to this as the six demon bag. Okay? Interesting. But the six demon bag is different. Because if you listen to the, what Jack Burton says, he goes, what else do you have? Egg Shen says, six demon bag. It's a separate bag from the magic potion. So I want both. I want the magic potion and I want the six demon bag. It's a little selfish. Well, the six demon bag's got wind, fire, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. You know, so that's it's good to have both. I like it. Those are the two things I want. And it looks like a like a little like pineapple coconut thing with like a cork in it. It looks like something you'd have in Hawaii. Yeah. With like uh, some poi. Yeah. It's delicious. You can put vodka in there. I, absolutely. Yeah. A nice. Uh, Slap the bag. Dirty martini. Yeah. <laughs> Extra dirty. <laughs> so that's what I want from uh, Big Trouble in Little China. I want the demon bag and the potion. I want the face exploding. Uh, like- Eyeball? No, no. Oh, no, no, no. When he gets all big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Who he gets mad. It? Yeah. Uh, that's one of the, the wind, f- thunder, whatever. That's Earth, dudes. I think. Yeah, something like that. Or it's, lightning. It's, 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 it's lightning. Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's lightning. Captain Planet. Is he You're wind? a hero. <laughs> gonna take pollution down to zero. He used our powers. You knew it. I knew you knew it. And I he's knew. fighting on the human side. Earth. Wind. Wind. Fire. Water. Fire. 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 Heart. Fire! 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 The great Cornelia. All right, that's enough. <laughs> I love that you knew the Captain Planet song. Yeah, Ch- 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 Chip and Dale's <laughs> rescue. Do you make Chip and Dale connections so we can TikTok I this don't. up? I know with 190 thousand views, it's still growing. People I know. Yeah. Uh, so that's my second to last pick, Max. I love it. Anything else that good. I want from that movie? I mean, the obvious ones, right? Like the Pork Chop Express, the actual truck. Yep. His T-shirt. His uh, his sleeveless T-shirt would be pretty cool. Oh, my God. Uh, the bottle that they try to break oh, and he catches. that's a really good That'd one. That'd be cool. That's a really, really good one. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The mattress in the whorehouse. <laughs> 
His glasses. His glasses would be good. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, I'm trying to there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff. I mean, any any of the skeletons that are down in the like the dungeon, the water, the dungeon, wheelchair. Yeah, that they get tied to. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. All right. A little weird. I'm game. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh no the 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 jacket from the uh, the fat or the Chinese restaurant. There's an actual jacket from. Uh, Oh yeah, that he, that he wears. That's like the name of the place. I can't think of what it's called, but it, whatever that uh, Korean restaurant or Japanese it's restaurant. It's like the Black is. Dragon or something. Yeah, or? the Black Lotus or yeah. White White Lotus. White Lotus. No, that's. The, I know that's a show. I'm just yeah. joking, Max. For the people, <laughs> I made a joke for the people. For God's sake. Okay, Max, are we to your second to last one or last? This is one? my final one. Oh my God! Now th- this is one of my top fifteen eighties movies. Oh, and dear you've never Lord. seen it. Still, it really bums me out. Oh, I don't. Does it bloom you out? It Blum, bums. It blums you out. It blums me out. Tip top, blum me out. It's 1981's Thief. I've never seen Thief. So it's Michael Mann's first movie. So okay. th- this movie walked so he could run. Sure. So you love Heat, right? I do love Heat. Yeah. So the, an ace safe cracker wants to do one last big heist for the mob before going straight. And it's really dark. It's Michael Mann. It's James Caan playing Frank. And he's like this very intense. He's been in jail. And he does this like weird thing where he doesn't abbreviate any words. Like rather than say, I don't do anything. He says, I do not, you know I mean? He's very like specific Mm -hmm. and Jim Belushi is his kind of second command. Best Jim Belushi serious performance ever seen. And it's in Chicago. What other Jim Belushi serious performances are there? It's a good question. Okay. So moving along. Yeah. yeah. K9. (laughs) That's not okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, that's substitute. No, the principal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that movie was terrible. Yeah. (laughs) I enjoyed it though. Do you see the one where didn't John Lovitz do like a like a high school hot high. shots? Yeah, like a yeah. hot shots high school high. high school yeah. high. Yeah. yeah, it's really bad. And that was uh that was directed by Hart Bachner, who played uh, the Hans Booby guy. Oh, in, I know uh, who he Die is. Hard. Our high school high was directed by yeah. Hart Bachner. Yeah. How do you know that? I for some reason that is insane. Isn't that, you know that weird? That's super weird. <laughs> Hans Booby. But anyways, so they worked with real safe crackers. They used real equipment. Like, this is like a no joke, everything by the book. That's how Michael Mann makes his movies. Got you know it. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So, for the Pierre de Resistance of this movie, they're robbing this... Uh, Question. Yeah. Isn't it Peace de Resistance, not Pierre? I have a friend named Pierre. I don't know. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> it sounds good. No, Pierre's fine. Mm. So, tell me about Pierre and, <laughs> and what his resistance is. So... They're big heists. They have all these like electronic timing locks, the timing of the guards, the window placements, every single detail, blueprint, all that kind of stuff. And it's the main part of the film. Finally, when they have to break into the actual diamond vault, they use a thermal lance, which uses magnesium rods inside a pipe. And when oxygen pressure is sent through it, it heats it up to about eight to 9,000 degrees. And it's about six or seven feet long. And they actually used it. And James Conn actually did it. And it's just really cool. It's really technical. I love, I'm very into like, People being experts in something in movies. People, right now. people named Pierre. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just think it's really cool. And I love James Con. And Hi, I, it's a great pick. Yeah. That's your number one. Uh, I don't go in order like you, you don't do. go in order. That's right. What is your number one of the John Claude Zondies? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I could have answered that question. Ask a dumb question, get a dumb answer. <laughs> I, I will give you my number one right now. <laughs> okay. I love this one. So Commando, which is a father daughter family movie about the importance of family. I know you've seen yep. it. Matrix played by Arnold Schwarzenegger has to rescue his kidnapped daughter, Jenny played by Alyssa Milano before the bad guys find out he has snapped the neck of his captor and left him on a plane. Pretty simple. Dead tired. John wick before John wick. If you ask me, that's what this movie hmm. is. Eventually matrix makes his way to the Island. That his daughter's being held on. He kills everyone, the entire army. Yeah. Like everyone. Yeah. That's the John wick. They had part. to reuse people. Yeah. It was incredible. Wasn't like Tom Cruise in there. No, I'm kidding. That was, uh, that was young guns. Uh, young guns. Thank you. It took me a second. Yeah. So while they're there, there's tons of cool weapons, lots of cool weapons, like rocket launchers, grenades, knives, shotguns. But there's one scene in particular that I love, and that leads me to the items that I want 100%. Items? Yeah. Plural. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. They all, they all fit the genre. Okay. While being chased, he takes refuge in an old tool shed, and they shoot the tool shed with about 20,000 bullets, yep. and he survives that. He's fine. They open the door, and he murders half a dozen soldiers using <laughs> basic gardening tools. I want all those gardening tools. I forgot tools. about that. Yep. So the first one is the pitchfork to the chest. The guy opens the door. He's kind of up in like the rafters, takes the pitchfork right to the chest. He then takes a circular saw replacement blade and throws it like a Frisbee and splits a guy's head in half. Oh, my God. He then does a second one to the neck of another guy, and he's donezo. 
Then he does a reverse axe swing. So your typical axe swing is like top to bottom. Yeah. This one is like from shoe to groin. Oh my God. And he axed the guy right in the groin. And then he takes a machete and cuts a guy's arm off clean at the limb. And if you rewatch it, the guy takes his good hand onto where the stub is squirting out blood and like <laughs> looks at the blood with like total horror in his eyes. So that means I want two replacement blades, a machete, an axe, and a pitchfork. So do you want like a recreation with dummies and like no no I just want the weapons. Okay, I just want the weapons. Okay. Keep in my I'm gonna keep in my tool shed. Oh, you're actually gonna use them day to day. Maybe yeah. Maybe just let them sit there. People will be like, those are really old looking things, and why would you have a circular saw replacement blade when you don't even have a circular saw? To which I would say, let off some steam. <laughs> I also on this movie could have gone with the pipe that he ripped out. What about the mesh tank top? I don't want the mesh tank top <laughs> at all. Well, I want the, ice the cream. knife. I want the ice cream cone. Yeah, that's super weird. The log. The log. The log yeah. would be good. Yeah. The log would was it a real log? No, it was not a real log. Oh. Remember, we were broken up about that. Yeah, that is. So, so then you could have it because you could actually lift it up. Max, on that, on, that, on that note, <laughs> that concludes my list and your list. Before we go any further, I want to hit up the Patreons and see what they had. So let's pop on over to my list of Patreon responses. Oh, we got some good ones. Are you ready? Hit me. Libby, a.k.a. Voluptuous Cannibal, did not... Followed the assignment. She got too excited. <laughs> when Harry met Sally. And no, she simply just said, Marco's jacket from Lost Boys. And I replied, is Lost Boys an action film? She's like, I did not read <laughs> the entire statement, but I appreciate it nonetheless. She loves Lost Boys. She does. Uh, Ryan Lavender, the helicopter from Blue Thunder. That's really snake, cool. I thought about that. Snake Pliskin's eye patch from Escape from New York. That's a great I one. I bet it's smelly. Chess Wizard, computer from The Thing. That's a great one. Oh, that is cool. Uh, let's see. Is that horror though? That's not action, right? I think the thing would count as action. Okay. All right. Oh, whatever. Yeah. They're not. They're not hosting the show. They're just giving feedback. Yeah. yeah. Hannah Eason, Big Al, Billy Rosewood's pet tortoise from Beverly Hills Cop. That's amazing. That's amazing. Love that one. Or the Rambo poster, or one of his plants. Could do that too. Yeah. Uh, Chris Adams, John Rambo's knife, Batman's utility belt. That is. That's awesome. a great one. Yeah, Ob- from obviously Keaton. from our Michael Keaton Batman. Yeah. Paul Cavanaugh's got a lot. And of the ones he listed, there's only one that I can't repeat from Scarface. But everything else I can put in here. What, the pile of baking soda? Yes. Yeah. The log from Commando. Oh, that's a familiar yep. one. The sweater from Die Hard that says, now I have a gun, ho, ho, ho. That's that's amazing. Jack Burton's knife from Big Trouble in Little China. Chung Lee's bandana from Bloodsport. I assume he means Jackson's bandana, but I could be wrong. Yeah, Chung Lee is from Street Fighter. Why do I always do that? He did it too. It's Chong. Oh, Chong Lee. Chong Lee. Yeah. Yeah, I said Chung. Yeah. Is it Chung or Chong? Chong. Chong. All right. Chong Lee. Yeah. Uh, You're thinking Street Fighter. It's the Pierre de Dieu Resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Robocop's gun. The Master Blaster suit from Beyond Thunderdome. That's a great one. Conan's sword. The Riddle of Steel. You like that? Yeah, I do. Max, what is best in life? Pierre, de, Pierre de Resistance. <laughs> Fighting of the snakes. Yogurt. The kryptonite from Superman 2. Yeah. Oh. Not three. Dang. Deuce. Yeah, it's better. And that, my friends, is our feedback from our patrons. This also takes us to the end of the episode, which also takes us to our Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight. Max, today's Buzz in the Tower fan spotlight is Sean Lang. You can find him on Instagram at SeanLang1944. Let me tell you why he already has won the tournament for the day. When we received our one bad piece of feedback from some other Sean, uh, was yeah. it on, Sean was it on Instagram or, or was it on TikTok? It was Instagram, yeah. And I ranted and raved about it on an episode. Sean Lang, who's a huge fan of the show, patiently waits every Tuesday for new episodes to come out, sent you the following message. Max, please read it. Hey, guys. I just listened to y'all's twin episode. As a fellow Sean, I believe the other Sean should take a leap off Nagatomi Plaza, run into David Lopan's dungeon. I love the podcast. I'm an Iceman, and I say, keep it up, guys. That's what I like to see. That's great. That's fantastic. That's, that's like a halftime speech. That's all I needed to get me through. That's a now, smack now, on the butt. I need another, I, I need another pep talk because yeah. of the bad review we got, which makes me so mad. Sean, once a week, I want once one of Once a week, these. we yeah. need those for sure. Yeah. All right, so let's see what Sean had to say about his favorite movie memorabilia from an 80s action film. Hey, Buzz in the Tower, this is Sean Lang here. Thanks for letting me come on for a few minutes and talk about some of my favorite 80s movie epic memorabilia. To start it off, we're going to go to Big Trouble Little China. The object I want is the blue robe that Jack Burton is wearing after his truck is stolen. And he's sitting there arguing about his insurance with the insurance company. But all the money he pays and everything, but they can't find him. I want that so the next time a telemarketer calls, I can wear and argue with them. Next, Die Hard. Great movie. Love it. I want the silver Zippo lighter 
that John McClane is using when he's crawling through the air ducts. Super neat scene. Gotta have it. Next, Predator. I want Blaine's boonie hat. Super awesome. Something that I think most guys want at least once in their life. It's got the one side flipped up, snake skin running around it. Super cool. Last but not least, I want, at the end of the day, to curl up with a nice little blue blanket. But not just any blanket. I want the blanket from Commando. The scene is where he's getting on the plane to go to South America to assassinate a guy. But instead, he's going to go on a one-man show. So he gets the blanket, kills a guy, throws a blanket over him. And don't forget the favorite line, he's dead tired. And off he goes. Hey, Maximo, thanks for letting me come on the show for a little bit and talk about some of my favorite 80s memorabilia. Keep up what you're doing, guys. Thanks. Cut from our own jib. The blue robe is fantastic. The blanket on the airline is, the, is the best thing I've ever yeah. heard in my entire life. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. <laughs> that is amazing. He did a great job. The neck snap that he puts on him in the plane is, is so violent. Yeah. Like, it shakes the whole freaking seat. <laughs> it's it's Commando is fantastic. It's the best. Sean, you crushed it. Uh, the Zippo lighter, the boonie hat, the whole nine yards. Uh, you are always welcome on the show. And if you ever run into other Sean, you know what to do. Ex- Punch him in the face. Execute order. What is the the, the Jedi Death Order? Oh, my God. Order. Uh, order. 23. Avacanara. What is it? I don't even know. What's the Harry Potter one? Uh, Avacanara. And Filios, man. Just, just, just sweep the leg. That's what you need to <laughs> yeah. do. Just sweep the damn leg. Yeah. Uh, so, Sean, thank you so much. For everyone else, a reminder, if you've not already, please subscribe, leave a review, any podcast platform you listen to us on, there's some way to show your love. For more content, head on over to social media, any platform, at Buzz in the Tower, B-U-Z-Z-N, The Tower. Join our Patreon. You, too, can be featured on the show and also put ducats in our pockets. That's a beautiful thing right there, I tell you what. Yeah. Max, other than that, our museum is full, and you can close us out with something brilliant, as you always do. If you need a collector's episode, I'm there for you. Anytime, my brother. I, that was okay. No? I mean, I, blood sport. We kind of already quoted it earlier. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. What do you got? I got one for you. You ready? What? The, the, I'm going to do a, something that if you watch the show, it'll tickle your fancy a little bit. Max, today's collector's episode is great, but have you ever considered doing a collector's episode Miami? <laughs> <laughs> You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.